seven characters, each with their own unique history and personal interests. It's the dynamic range of this group that keeps fans coming back for more. The only problem is that there aren't many answers out there regarding why the team is numbered. Don't worry though, the best theories and potential answers are on this list. Get ready for some shocking ideas involving powers and numbers. To get behind the meaning of the numbers, we need to define who labeled them to begin with. Reginald Hargreaves is the main suspect. He takes the children in and adopts them as his own. Surely, he marked them with these titles with some kind of purpose. Well, some of those theories attach the heroes to their usefulness and Reggie's perspective of the team. In other words, their ability to use their powers effectively marked their position in the team. Space Boy is called number one. So in this theory, he's the most useful. Meanwhile, poor Vanya is at the bottom of the list at number seven, she's considered the least valuable. There are plenty of examples within the context of the show and comics to support this idea. Space Boy is the leader of the team and shows a firm grasp of his powers. Super Strength is not that hard to understand and use in everyday life. His skill set can be used in almost any mission. Now see, Diego the Kraken is in a similar position. It's why he's naturally averse to Luther in the position that he holds. Diego was controversially labeled number two when he could have just as easily been number one. Now at the bottom of the totem pole sits number seven, six, and five. Looking back at their past adventures, this theory fits this idea. When they were named, Ben and Vanya were not seen as powerful. Vanya was being suppressed by the monocle and Ben didn't even want to use his powers. Number five was just as questionable. He can only travel forward in time as a kid. That's not super useful. That's like having a one-use kitchen timer. It's not going to come in handy at all except for that one time that you're willing to try it. The problem comes with adulthood. Things are just a bit too gray near the top. The usefulness of each character stretches and changes over time. Heck, number three is super useful at any moment and makes just as much sense as the number one slot. Why would Reginald pick Luther to be the top hero? Both Diego and Allison showed the same promise. It feels too objective to come down to a decision like most useful in a mission. Not to mention the spoilers that we now know about season one. Vanya is actually probably the most powerful person on the team. Give her a violin and she becomes nearly unstoppable. The monocle knew this, you know? Reggie was aware of her potential and sought to diminish it. Doesn't that mean he might label her number one for her real usefulness? Well, maybe not. I mean, after all, he wanted to dampen her spirits and keep the white violin under control. Giving her the lowest position in the team might have been another way to keep her from trying to seek her power. It's a way to rationalize this theory, but if you're not sold, don't worry. There's way more where this all came from coming right up. It's okay to give this entry a double take. We get it. This one sounds a lot like the last one. Well, just allow us a little bit of time to explain and everything will make sense here in just a moment, I promise. We first discussed the idea of numbering the children in terms of usefulness. The priority was given to the first child in line. Here, the exact opposite is true. The higher your number, the stronger you are. It's over 9,000! Think of this entry like a grade on a paper. The higher you get, the better off you are. Just pray you don't get stuck with Mr. Crocker. The man is wild about low grades. In this theory, number seven is the top dog. She is actually the strongest character. To Reginald, she's the most significant threat, which gives her the largest number. Don't mess with Vanya. Ellen Page's character will ruin your day. Not to mention the fact the horror is so intense, he probably caused a wild catastrophe that left him down and out. Five's powers give him so much knowledge about the world and its future that he can influence the whole timeline. The highest numbers hold the most influence in the world. On the opposite end, Luther and Diego both control their powers well, but they're no threats. Now don't get us wrong, a superpower is a superpower. <laughs> and Luther and Diego are much stronger than the average person. However, their abilities don't pose as much of a threat to Reginald and his experiment. Vanya and Ben did. The two were such a threat that they barely were able to show off as children. Think of their powers as volatility. The stronger one of these child superheroes is, the more dangerous for anyone else. 
hence marking them down with numbers to estimate their threat level. Ben lacks all control, and it ends up proving the point here. Vanya is so threatening, her powers are hidden from her. Stay skeptic if you want, but we feel that there's a lot to like about this entry. Every character seems to match their place in this list now, at least more than they did with the usefulness criteria. In television's long, illustrious career, many terrible dads have graced the screens of our homes. There's Homer's well-meaning attempts at giving Bart, Lisa, and Maggie a better life while managing to screw it all up at the same time. George Bluth is always talking about money in the banana stand. Of course, there's Peter Griffin's constant torment of his daughter Meg and pure ignorance of his family's well-being. Obviously, we can't forget Stannis Baratheon and his desperate attempts to seize the Iron Throne. It's true, all of these dads are bad. Man, Sir Reginald Hargreaves is totally up there. This theory revolves all around Daddy Dearest. Reggie occasionally shows appreciation for all of his adopted children, but it is rare. Everyone is convinced the dude is secretly an alien, and, well, we wouldn't be surprised. He's got all the coldness of a mind flayer mixed with an absent father. Gosh, we just shiver at the thought. I mean, the man made a robot to care for the kids because he wasn't even capable of emotion. So, enough about Reggie. Let's talk about the kiddos. Each one of them seems to abandon the name calling by the time that they've grown up. Their mother robot calls them all by their real names. Just like Army Hammer did for Timothy Charlemagne. Well, not exactly, but we just wanted an excuse to show you part of the movie. Still, though, let's get back on track here before we start talking about apricots. The only person the audience ever sees stick to the number system is Reginald. He never acknowledges them as anything else. They're an experiment to him. It's all a plot to create his own little team of superhero munchkins. He's merely using them to get to an end goal. There's no reason for him to learn their names. Which brings us to the golden point. Hargreaves doesn't know their real names. He's a terrible parent that doesn't involve himself in the child's lives. I mean, sure, in all likelihood he knows who they are, it's just not what he's invested in. They're not his kids, they're his powers. The only thing he cares about is what they can do. He'd name them after their number if he could, but that's not up to him. The point is, never believe any emotional attachment Reggie shows. Calling them by their number is a way for him to keep his distance when he inevitably loses all of them. Honestly, all this is is a nice segue into the next entry. If you're a bit bummed out now, just wait for this next theory. It's a real joyful thought. Ah, nihilism. We think Morty Smith defined it best. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. It's not a lovely thought. The whole point is that there is no point. No one exists for any reason. The children of Umbrella Academy are brought into the world without purpose. The exact same is true for their numbering. Yeah, that's right. It's that kind of entry. The one that just kind of deflates the whole balloon. Watch the opening of the show again. When the strollers are brought into the Monocle's house, they're numbered. Each number matches the number that the child is given. Luther is in the number one stroller, and Vanya, she's in the number seven stroller. It's pure random chance. No amount of powers or usefulness matters here. Someone just placed the babies in at random intervals, and the system was born out of lazy parenting. The worst part is this actually makes a good bit of sense. Consider the fact that no one in the group cares much about their number. From Luther to Vanya, none of these people are digging into the meaning behind all of this. Perhaps they all know something that we don't. Then again, if it is the case, no showrunner would want to tell us. It's the blandest of possibilities. It's the Diet Coke of fan theories. Think of this entry like the one friend that you know who ruins everything. Come on, you know the one. They're always reminding people of worse things and over-explaining simple stuff. This idea is the theory version of that friend. Please don't get mad at the messenger, we're just here reporting what the theory says. The hardest part is the fact that it's a real possibility. We don't want to suggest that it's the best theory, but it has potential. It happens all the time on television. People get super invested in figuring something out and searching for deeper meaning. 
the writers panic and give up on anything cool. Instead, the show responds to our enthusiasm with a huge bummer. We're told it is what it is, and to quit asking questions. Oh god. Oh god, this is Snoke all over again, isn't it? Ugh, let's face it. No one wants to end this video on that sad note. Let's bring the energy back up for one last headline-grabbing possibility. This one is a real showstopper. Everything you just heard can be tied into this theory. That's right. It's like the one ring in Lord of the Rings. The one idea to rule them all. During the fateful day that started this whole series, 43 children were born with powers beyond human understanding. The show only shows seven of these babies, and everyone is left wondering what happened to the other 36 rejects. And the answer for that is for a different video. Come on now people, let's keep our eyes on the prize. Don't get distracted from the important theory. The collectors numbered all of the orphaned children. Every one of them is tagged in a system somewhere. So here's how it attaches itself to the other theories. The system might be based on their usefulness or powers. And if that's the case, a lot of the higher numbers were probably stopped before they became threats. Hargreaves takes in the last seven and knows that at any moment the government might step in and take them away. And so, because of that, he doesn't get attached to them. And it explains why they all come in in numbered strollers. The theory leaves open the possibility for more numbered children too. The world knows the exact number of children born that day with abilities. It's not like they're pulling the number out from thin air. Someone made sure that all these potential threats were accounted for and examined. There is no way you get an exact count otherwise. It makes too much sense. If it feels obvious to you, it's okay. The odds are in favor of this concept. The writers can explain away any loose ends with one reveal. Fans will know what happened to 8 through 43 and why the numbers are done in the first place. It's a real win-win for everyone. Hopefully, that ended on a high note for you, after the highs and lows of those first couple entries. Do you have a favorite out of the group? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below and expect more Umbrella Academy videos. We're always adding videos daily here at The Binger, so support us by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel to stay caught up and up to date on all of our new videos.